Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 tutorial. This is, I think, the third part of my character-specific tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at the other Khan. Uh, in the last episode, we of course looked at uh, Shao Khan. Now it's time to cover Kotal Khan, the one true emperor of Outworld. You know he's the true emperor, of course he is. Uh, Kotal Khan, man. Kotal Khan is probably the most famous in this game for not being very good. And believe me, I've been playing nothing but Kotal Khan for the past few days, ever since uh, I think Combat League came out, and I can confirm that he's not very good. Listen, this is not a top tier character by any means. However, is he extremely fun? I think he's extremely fun. He really fits my playstyle. Uh, you know, I, as you can probably remember I was playing Scorpion before. Uh, Scorpion was kind of my main character. I kind of switched away from Scorpion because literally every second match in Combat League is a mirror match and I'm not a big fan of mirror matches and I was looking around at what other character I can play. Started picking up Kotal Khan and he is just so much fun. Believe me, if you decide to play this character uh, maybe you're not gonna have the win percentage of someone who plays a top tier, but man is it gonna be fun. So yeah, in this video I'm gonna look at and show you kind of the few things that Kotal Khan does have, because he's not without tricks, you know, certainly I've been winning with him and he does have some stuff, it's just he has some very, very, very apparent weaknesses, extremely apparent, so, you know, that's kind of the main thing holding him back. But yeah, let's get into this. Let's cover some of Kotal Khan's movement speed. His walk speed is actually decent, especially forward dash, nothing special. The forward dash is good, uh, back dash is not very special. Jump, the thing about his jump is he's very similar to Shao Kahn. I think in my Shao Kahn kind of tutorial video, I mentioned that both Khans are very similar and kind of suffer from the same problems. That holds very true. Uh, this jump... The problem with Kotal Khan is that he has a huge hurt box, and because of that, he does have trouble uh, jumping over projectiles. Maybe the, I didn't set this up. The, in, yeah, the perfect example. Uh, he has trouble jumping over projectiles. His feet tend to get caught. So, you know, when jumping with this character, be very careful. Even though his jump ins are decent, he pretty much keeps the jump ins he had in. Uh, Mortal Kombat X. His jumping kick is especially uh, worthy of note, especially since, we'll cover this later, especially since he has a command grab. Uh, and I think with a bit of, yeah, with a bit of delay you can go into the command grab since jumping kicks tend to be fairly plus on block. Anyways, we'll get into all of that later. So yeah, that's his movement. Let's look at his buttons. Unfortunately, Kotal Khan suffers from having some shitty pokes. Uh, the chief of them being his down one. Kotal Khan has one of the worst down ones in the entire game, in terms of range. If we look at the frame data for it, uh, 7 frames, so not bad, not good, you know, not the fastest. However, unlike his MKX counterpart, or his version, where his down one was excellent, in this game, his down one is very, very stubby. Probably the stubbiest out of all characters. So, you know, in a game like this that is so poke heavy, that that diminish, diminishes this character's strength. Uh, especially since one of his best tools, especially in this variation, is going into tick throws. So down one would be his best tick throw since, you know, he can only tick throw off of his down three, I think. Other than that. But yeah... Bad down ones very much hinder this character. He cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best pokers like Sub-Zero, even Scorpion, Katana, you know. Characters who have longer range down pokes. He just, yeah, cannot go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So be very careful with his down one. Instead of his down one, you should use his down three, which is actually decent. Uh, down three is nine frames on startup, so two frames slower. But in terms of range... Uh, low profiling, distance, ev everything is much better, so definitely go for this. And as you saw, he can still tick off of that, which we'll go into later. Some other pokes worth mentioning, <laughs> he really doesn't have that many, but his forward 4. His forward 4 is his big boot, 
negative three on block, interestingly. So this is not plus, unlike most characters' big boots. It is a myth, however. Uh, some of these, like, I think Shang Tsung's is very plus, but it's a high. So yeah, this is a mid, negative three on block, but still decent. Uh, you can, you know, just give them, give them the boot and you probably still have time to do something if they block it. Not like a full combo string or anything. It's not as good as Sub-Zero's Ford 4 or anything like that, but keep this thing in mind, it is okay. Finally, uh, he doesn't even have any pokes worth mentioning other than this. I guess we can cover his down two. His down two is decent uh, in terms of hitbox. Forward hitbox is not that good, but it is fairly quick. He reaches upwards quite high, so he does have a good anti air. We'll cover all his other moves in his strings. Sweep, nothing special. Down four, down four has okay distance, I guess I can mention that, but not very good frames. All right, let's get into his strings. Kotal Khan, aside from having bad pokes, the other thing he kind of suffers from and demonstrating this with a training dummy is kind of difficult but the other thing he suffers from is that he also has a stubby Ford one you'll notice if you play with him uh, and other Kotal mains uh, the other three of you that are out there please confirm but the problem is that he he Kotal Khan tends to get beaten out if you use his standing one. So standing one punishes are actually fairly difficult with him because again, he just tends to get beaten out, which is a very weird phenomenon. Maybe it's because his standing one kind of goes upwards. I don't know what it is, man, but I lose so much when I try to punish with standing one or try to counter. Instead, the other string you should use, a much better punish string, is his standing two string. This is two two. Even though, just like his down poke versus his down one, or down three versus his down one, this one is actually, I think, two frames faster, or slower. Yeah, this is nine startup, and this is, no, it's actually only one frame. Yeah, this is one frame slower, but in terms of range, in terms of reliable hitbox, this is much better. So anytime you're punishing with Kotal Khan, uh, I would recommend going for uh, the standing to punish and this is a low two so even in neutral if someone is blocking they can you know be caught off guard by this move one of the things you will have as an advantage if you're playing Kotal Khan is lack of matchup knowledge really most people have never fought a Kotal Khan online or fought very few especially decent ones so if you do decide to pick up this character you will have the advantage of just opponents not being familiar with what you're able to do allowing you to get away with some things you normally wouldn't be allowed to get away with for example going for uh, that low string and getting caught other strings worth mentioning his Ford 122 this is supposed to be his big like uh, distant punish string. He had similar stuff in MKX. Travels pretty far, uh, ends in a mid overhead, even though it does start off with a high. Uh, this does have a crushing blow on it, which I guess we can go into. There we go, easy crushing blow. So we can go with this. The requirement is that this has to be a counter hit, and Kotokan can get some decent damage off of this. When we cover his uh, main faults, I'll go into uh, this crushing blow and all his crushing blows. So yeah, that is, he does have that. Main problem with this string is, basically the main problem with all of Kotal Khan's moves is that they're all highs. Again, when we covered Shao Khan, uh, I kind of complained about the same thing. Everything this character does is a high. He literally has this as a mid, and this is a mid. Nothing else he does is mid. That, even that's a high. So one of the things you're going to be struggling with with Kotal is people who are disrespectful. Again, exactly like Shao Kahn. People who are very spammy with down fours and down ones and all that. You are going to get beaten out constantly. Let alone meeting someone who is uh, very uppercut heavy. You're going to get uppercut so much if you fight someone like that because Everything Kotal Khan does except this string is a high. So this string normally, this would be an excellent string. However, it being a high, it's being held back. 
does have very good forward range. I will give you that fairly fast as well. So you can punish with it. All right, moving on. He also has this string. Uh, it also goes off of his forward one. It's a low. So, you know, you'd think that this would be a mix up. However, the main problem here is that there is a mid in between. If this was high overhead uh, mid or something like this, then you could mix up. However, this is not a mix up. It's completely easy to react to. You just block low. And if you see the Koro Khan player continuing the string, you just stand up in the last hit. This, however, you know, still f travels forward decently, so it's decent low in that regard. However, one good string that Coral does have is his 4-2 string. This is his big mid. Uh, I think his other strings suck because NRS truly believed that this was the be-all end-all string. And certainly this is good. I mean, it covers a huge distance, it is mid, uh, goes into a full combo. You know, it has all the advantages, so you would think. Certainly, it can be used to punish. Uh, people who are even like throwing projectiles, uh, this can even be used as a zoning counter because the startup is very good on it. You can travel forward a huge amount, go into a full combo, so you know, uh, like this distance for, with Kotal Khan is very dangerous. Certainly, it has that as an advantage. Again, it goes into a full combo. However, breaking down the frames, forward to is negative seven so there's not really much you can do after it uh forward two four is negative seven as well so again not much you can do after it the last ender forward two four three is negative 14. i think i mentioned this in a previous video i think in the Kotal Khan lab video that you should never ever use this string that still holds true to this day there is zero reasons to go for this string uh, it doesn't give you anything. So if the string hits, you should always go for the combo. If the string is blocked, you should just stop here and take being negative seven. You know, negative seven is sort of on the border of being punishable or not. Technically, it's punishable. Uh, this string does have decent pushback. So, you know, you got that going. Actually, it doesn't have decent pushback. It's probably fully punishable by certain characters, but not a big punish. So... Yeah, you should just take being negative 7 and try to block. There is zero reasons to ever go for this thing. Because there, there is no mix-up here, you know. This doesn't start with an overhead. There is nothing. Even still, as much as I shit on the ender, uh, I cannot deny that the first part of this string is decent. Probably the best tool that Kotal Khan has. Next up, we have probably one of the worst tools Kotal Khan has. The back 2-2-3 two, two, string. This has got to be one of the worst strings in the game. I don't know about you, but it's just bad. Sure, it has decent range. Sure, it can go into a full punish. Actually, I think because it launches, you cannot get the forward uh, one with it. No, you, yes, you can. Never mind. Does not end in an overhead. However, if I go to a quick switch to player two and I record... Kotal Khan doing this string, there is two chief problems with it. Problem number one with this string is that it's a high. As Kotal Khan tends to be, you know, you, you, can go, you can go for all sorts of shit. Just uppercut. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. The second problem is that the Last hit has the biggest goddamn gap in it I've ever seen. I don't know what else I can get away with. I don't know if I can get away with uh, a standing one. Probably not. No, you can't. But if you see a Kotal Khan player doing this string, you can always get away with it. You can always punish it. Uh, this string has zero uses. In the corner, sometimes I'll do it because it does end in an overhead and... Again, the reason I tend to do it more is that, once again, people are unfamiliar with this character. But realistically, if you're facing a serious opponent who knows what they're doing, you should never, ever go for this string. Alright, next up... I keep messing up the menus. Next up, this standing 3-4 string is... Uh, I don't tend to use it. This, however, is decent. His 4-3-4. It's safe on block. 
4-3 on its own can go into a full combo. So yeah, that's 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 okay. That's probably his one low starter that he does have. Kotalkan does not have overhead starters. He again he has uh, this as an overhead and this as an overhead. So not much in terms of mix-ups. Alright. Let's go ahead and look at his special moves. We have the parry. The parry has been completely neutered in this game. The parry was one of Kotal Kahn's strongest tools in MKX. You know, Kotal Kahn has bad, had bad defense, especially in the Blood God variation. And the idea was that you would use the parry. Uh, the parry in this game is completely shit. Uh, you can use it to parry single hit projectiles. It still works the same way as it did uh it gives him a damage buff so that deals uh 324 and on its own it's gonna be like uh i think barely three 290 so it gives him a bit of a damage buff and yeah that's supposed to be it however in terms of doing stuff like what you could do in mkx where you could you know like rapidly press this and parry hella moves doesn't work anymore Next up, we have the... Uh, actually, I'll cover the variation specifics later. We have the disc. This disc, again, neutered. Doesn't have an EX variation. Uh, it's now high. Deals less damage. Yeah. Uh, it's no longer the stop-all zoning tool it used to be in MKX. On the other hand, it does have a decent cl crushing blow off of it. The requirement for this is that uh, it acts as a punish... Uh, you can hit your opponent with it. If you're trading projectiles, you know, uh, you can go for this. If you're absolutely certain, and then you can punish. The good thing about this is because it goes into the crushing blow animation, whatever projectile the opponent threw out will not hit you. So you got that as an advantage. However, as a zoning tool, this projectile is very weak indeed. Very, very weak. So yeah, you can still throw it out once in a while, but do not rely on it. Not as much as you could in MKX. Next up, you have this. This Kotal Quake, you know, he had something like this in the previous game as well. This is supposed to be quote-unquote Kotal's mix-up. The idea is, if I set the opponent to block, uh, what you can do is go into the Kotal Quake off of the strings that he can do. And since it's unblockable, the idea is that people are going to get hit by it. Realistically... You can get away with using this move on opponents who do not know what they're getting hit by. However, anyone who is experienced, or if you're playing a longer set against a Kotal, or you're playing a longer set against someone else, people are going to catch on. Any string into this move has a massive gap in it. So a down one, even a standing one sometimes, jumping out, all of these can punish the Kotal Quake. The problem with this move is that it's simply too slow to be any real threat. However, one of the things I will give it, one of the things that you can get away with is that if you have your opponent in the corner at like this distance, if they're waking up, you know, like with Kotal you want to be at this distance anyways, you know, and if they're just like standing here or blocking or trying to wake up or something, you can hit them with the unblockable parry. Because again, it's unblockable, so it's decent. Deals okay damage as well. However, as a mix-up tool, it is incredibly weak. And really, anyone who knows what they're doing is never going to get hit by this move. Alright, next up we have this God Ray. I consider this to be a universal move, even though he has a different version in the other variations. It's the classic Kotal Sun. Now the Kotal Sun, once again, was a very good move in X. It was very quick, you could direct it at yourself. Uh, in this variation you cannot direct it, you just have a close variation and a far variation. The problem with this move is that it's very difficult to get it out. Really, the one way to get it out is this. Uh, if you cut your combo short, and going for the sun ray. Even still, the animation on this thing is absolutely insane. Let me just quickly check. Startup 14 frames. God, it feels a lot longer than 14 frames. Uh, he just sits there forever raising his hand. 
and realistically, holy shit, that has a big hitbox, so, uh, realistically, anything, like, can be used to punish this. If you're close to the opponent, they can go for, you know, I don't know, wake up or standing one. Far away, if your opponent has a teleport, you know, scorpion, uh, noob cybot, things like that, you are going to get punished every time. So going for this is risky, even though the rewards are worth it. This is a decent move. First of all, it heals Kotal. It heals him by quite a bit. Second of all, it also hurts your opponent. A la, you know, Aaron Black. You can get like a 170, one damage throw, so... The move itself is good, it's worth trying to get it out, it's just keep in mind that you will have a big likelihood of being punished, which is like basically the thing with anything you do with Kotal Khan. Alright, let's get into the variation specifics, this variation has two moves, one of them is this that I've been doing, probably one of Kotal Khan's strongest options. This character, one thing he does excel at is not having to spend meter for damage, yeah. This is a meterless launcher, so again, Kotal Khan does excel with just being able to do shit and not having to worry about conserving res resources, which means that you can always enhance your uh, little command grabs. You can always, you know, enhance your parry if you want to do that. Anything that can be enhanced, you can enhance because he just doesn't use meter. Uh, he just doesn't really use meter. This move is negative 13 on block, so it is punishable, so be careful with it. In terms of this being an anti-air, it's not that good. You would think it would be, but it's not really. However, again, that does mean that anytime your opponent does make a mistake, they're going to be eating a big combo. Uh, one of this variation's strongest suits is that you can always get big damage off of your punishes, if you know how to punish correctly. The second thing he has is another move I've been doing a ton, this command grab. Now this command grab deals a bit less damage uh, meterlessly. However, because Kotal doesn't use meter really for his combos, you can almost always enhance it and get 18, 180 damage. This command grab also acts as a buff. So you'll see that did 125. Second time around, it'll do 139. And third time around, there are three levels to the buff, or two levels technically. It'll do 154. And it'll cap out at this 154 damage. So, wait, it does not. There are three levels to it. Okay, my mistake. Realistically, uh, it's unlikely you're gonna get the three levels of it. But still, that is a decent move. I think it goes away when Kotal Khan is knocked down. Not goes away, but... You go down one level when Kotal Khan gets knocked down. Kind of like... Uh, what's the guy's name? G, I think. Is that his name? G? In Street Fighter, the one that has the buff like that? Anyways, this is a decent command grab. Uh, Kotal can take off of it. Standing one. Standing two doesn't work. Down one for sure works. Yeah, so... Some of the stuff works... Uh, some of the best moves he has do not work, but probably the best thing you can take off of is your down three, which actually, yeah, that seems to be kind of inconsistent. Holy shit, okay. This is not as good as I thought. This is inconsistent. Wow, okay. Strike one against this character. Another strike. And poor Kotal. So yeah, you can go for tick throws, but really this is a combo ender, which, of course, is bad because this move always reverses with the opponent. Always. Uh, one of the things Kotal has real trouble with is keeping someone in the corner. He always throws them out, so yeah, you'll have to keep that in mind. Just be careful because you will almost always be mid-screen from your opponent. It's very difficult to keep people in the corner if you want big damage. Uh, really, if you want to keep them in the corner or want to keep them towards the corner, you can go for another god. Uh, Khan Cut, I think this move is called, or God Cut, whatever. So yeah, that's one of Kotal's uh, main weaknesses. So that's about covers this variation. This is by far the strongest variation Kotal has. Again, meterless damage and the command grab at least give him something. Unlike variation 2, which is called Totemic in uh, the tournament version. This variation is kind of ass. 
Yeah, not kind of very, very ass. Uh, he gains a couple of new moves. First of all, the Khan uppercut gets replaced by the slice move, which looks very brutal. Uh, I admire the brutality of this move. However, it no longer launches. Okay damage, I will give them that for one bar, but it no longer launches. He also gains two other new moves, well actually three. One of them is this air pounce, which is absolutely shitty. Uh, the problem with this air pounce, first of all, you switch places with your opponent. Can't even do it. Yeah, so, you know, if you're towards the corner, you just now put yourself in the corner. The second thing is, is that this move is very predictable. So, it's not projectile immune or anything like that. So, yeah, the opponent can anticipate this, uppercut it, uh, ice ball it, teleport it, whatever, and you will be punished. So, when I do use this variation, in the rare chances I do, I do not tend to go for this. But still, you know, all the tricks that any of these like air moves offer for other characters work for this character as well. So, like, the jump pack into this move, it does work. But, as you can see, the damage on it is not amazing. It does not have an EX version like Kong Lao's uh, dive kick. In terms of dive kicks go, this is this is weak. Kotokan also gains this move, this little panther kind of mauling attack. The thing about this, and let me just set this up decently. Some part of it, some part of this move is projectile immune if I'm correct. Is it not? I seem to have seen tech videos of people doing this move and them being immune to projectiles. I'm guessing I'm wrong. Uh, why did I think this was immune to projectiles? Uh, if I am not wrong, correct me. But yeah, this move, very shitty. Extremely negative on block. In fact, I think it is negative 22. 28, holy shit. Oh, poor Coral. You can go and... Oh, that's the projectile immune part. Yeah, I remember. If you enhance it, I'm wrong. Or I'm right. Well, in this situation, am I wrong or am I right? But yeah, you can enhance it to make it projectile invincible. And yeah, that's... You got that, but... Really, this move... Look at how little damage this deals. Uh, you do not get good spacing off of it. One thing it does have is decent corner carry. It's just still, I would recommend to be very careful with this move. We The air one we covered, Kotal Quake he has. And one thing he has as well in this variation is the other version of the God Raid, the proper version. This, this move is way better. It goes straight on Kotal. So in terms of healing and in terms of turtling, this is very good. Getting it out is still difficult. But uh, since it goes straight onto you, uh, you can just like chill here and gain back HP. One thing this variation is supposed to be, I think the gameplay idea is supposed to be that this is a very defensive variation. You, know, He just constantly heals, he avoids projectiles and he cannot be kept down. However, he doesn't do that very well. Adding to that is his final unique special move, this totem. He has three levels of it. And it's basically his Blood Totem from MKX. So, anytime you damage your opponent, the blood goes into the totem. And when it expires, which it will do, you get HP back. Again, as you can see, the idea is supposed to be to always have this totem up. And, you know, have the sun up. Go for these, like, brutal blood draining moves. Go for the panther. And just keep gaining HP back and like be really difficult to break down. He doesn't do this very well. The problem is he has no reliable way to get this totem out. Because he doesn't have combos in this variation. Kolokan cannot launch in this variation. Realistically, nothing he can do will leave him enough time to set up the slide. You know, not the slide. <laughs> the totem. Uh, I'm saying slide because... Perfect example of a character that gives him problems. Uh, this version of Sub-Zero with the Thin Ice Slide can punish the totem setup every single time if the Sub-Zero is ready. So, realistically, neither this move 
not this move, this move or this move are gonna be seen that much or if they are gonna be seen, uh, you are likely to get punished if you're the Kolo player, so... I completely get the idea behind this variation, it's just kind of confused. I think he needs something else. Uh, I think instead of the blood totem, he really would need the damage totem to work. Speaking of, I'm kind of approaching the other topic I wanted to cover. How to buff Kotal Khan. Uh, this variation, I think, is pretty clear. Uh, if he's not gonna have combos, at least give him the damage totem. Like, you have the damage totem, you do something like this, even that is gonna deal enough damage for it to be a threat. Uh, this blood totem does not fit this variation at all. And then it can be a real threat, you know. Something like uh, War God Light, well not War God, what was it called? Blood God, something like Blood God Light from MKX, you know. He's not gonna have the defensive totem or the blood totem, but he is gonna deal damage when he hits you and still have the sun available. Still gonna struggle with not being able to set up the totem, but the damage one might be worth taking the risk for. So I think that's what this variation needs. Also, this move needs something done to it. Either have it deal more damage or make it enhanceable, give it projectile immunity, I don't know, but this move on its own is absolute ass. Kotal Khan on his own is pretty ass. I think to be really competitive, he would need a couple of things. I would say give him one more mid. Uh, I don't know if characters would really suffer, if the character would be really OP if this was a mid. I would say, okay, slow this down a little bit, but make it a mid. So many characters have incredibly fast mids in this game. Jackie Briggs, perfect example. Scorpion has decent ones. You know, a lot of characters have good mids. So why shouldn't Kotal Khan have mids? Uh, I get the idea. They were kind of scared of making this a mid that's too fast. But in this stage, he just really suffers. Uh, the other option would be to give another ender to this. Like give an overhead here, at least give us some sort of mix-up, even if it's reactable. And this, this string, I would say, remove the gap at the end. Uh, it's just unrealistic to have a string that's already a high uh, have this huge of a gap in it. Other than that, I would say the other variation does not need uh, too much of an overhaul. It's decent. It's probably the best variation of Kotal. Oh, yeah, he, he can also do this in this variation. This is okay. Uh, but again, requires way too much setup. So the other version on its own is decent and it could be made really good if Kotal himself was improved a little bit. Also, just do something with the parry. This parry is just so confusing. It's just so confusing, like what's the point of this? Okay, you can use it for projectiles, but what else? It's a shame, man. It's a real shame. Both cons have the exact same problems and, you know, I would say Kotal is still more viable than Shao because of this being a mid, simply put, and him being a bit less dangerous on whiff. Sure, this on whiff is still death, but uh, Shao Kahn suffers more from whiffing. But still, this character is weak. Simply put, he's weak. However, I would say he doesn't need much to be made good. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling. This has been a detailed guide slash look at Kotal Khan. This is a fun character. I still enjoy him, even though he is terrible. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, do all that. I especially appreciate comments, likes, and subs coming from MK videos, especially because YouTube's algorithm and its detection system makes it so that it's almost impossible for me to get ad revenue from Mortal Kombat videos. But still, the comments and all the good words and all that really make it worth it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm also going to link my Discord uh, at the end here if you want to join. Always welcome. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.